otitis media as the topic, and I'll abbreviate it OM in this video. Essentially, otitis media happens in uh, children most commonly, but it can happen in adults as well. Now, the reason it happens a lot in children is because in kids, you have a structure known as a eustachian tube that is uh, quite uh, different uh, than an adult. So that uh, is representing the eustachian tube. And essentially, it's a structure that connects the nose to the ear. Now, in infants, it's more horizontal, as I've tried to draw it there. Whereas in an adult, the eustachian tube between the nose and the ear will be a little bit more like that. I'm exaggerating it a bit. The fact that the angle in children is more horizontal makes it more likely that during a upper respiratory tract infection, infected fluid can go from the nose to the ear more likely. So keep that in mind. Now in terms of age, the clinical vignettes usually talk about a child that's between three months and three years of age and the etiology can be either viral or bacterial in terms of the cause or the pathogen. And the bacterial causes most commonly there's three, there's strep pneumo, streptococcus pneumonia, there's uh, Morexella, Morexella catarrhalis, and then the third one is Haemophilus, Haemophilus influenzae, and those are the, the three big players. In terms of symptoms, the symptomatology of uh, otitis media is an earache, but in small children, since they can't really verbalize the pain, the child will oftentimes pull at the ear, and that will be definitely uh, written in the vignette. Sometimes there can be associated hearing loss, some basic general symptoms such as fever, irritability, and then sometimes nausea or vomiting. Physical exam with the otoscope, of course, is the key and that will show a bulging, some red erythematous tympanic membrane. And that is pretty a uh, big hallmark of otitis media. In terms of diagnosis, there's no tests for acute cases. You just do a clinical diagnosis based on symptoms and physical exam. Treatment, antibiotics, most commonly um, oxacillin. This is by far one of the most common antibiotics given to children for a wide variety of uh, medical conditions, but definitely for otitis media, and it's given as the oral form. The key thing with uh, acute otitis media is when you have re recurrent acute otitis media, where the child keeps getting these. The first step to this is antibiotic prophylaxis in terms of treatment, meaning you give the child antibiotics every night to make sure that the child doesn't develop it. If that fails, then what do you do? Then you put these tubes in, and this is a very common procedure. They're called tympanostomy tubes. And what they do is they help prevent the accumulation of fluid in the middle ear. So that is um, a very common procedure done in pediatrics. I want to talk a little bit about chronic otitis media before I go to the clinical vignettes. We talked about acute, now let's talk about chronic. Chronic otitis media on clinical vignettes will often involve an adult, and the symptoms will be otorrhea, which essentially is ear drainage, for a long period of time, greater than six weeks. And this is a scenario that's involved uh, a perforation of the tympanic membrane. So it's uh, quite serious. Now, one thing that's very uh, significant that can occur with chronic otitis media is the development of something called cholesteatoma. And when this happens, what's essentially going on is that you have this white debris that's going to be uh, detected 
on, on the physical exam and also there's a draining mass that's protruding through the tympanic membrane so uh, this is essentially going to cause ongoing recurrent otitis media in an adult so keep this in mind as a, a complication of otitis media now when this uh, does occur the diagnosis is a little bit more complicated of course there's the clinical aspect to it where you you know history and physical exam but you also need to culture the drainage and even more seriously if you have a patient in which you're suspecting this coleostoma for example if the patient has white debris or a mass that you see protruding through the tympanic membrane then you actually need to do a CT of the head and what that does is it looks for other possible problems such as an erosion or an abscess so pretty significant treatment of chronic otitis media antibiotics but also you need to go in and remove all this excess tissue that's developed and if it indeed is a cholesteatoma then those are treated surgically so keep that in mind so now let's take a look at some clinical vignettes three-year-old girl is brought to the clinic because of three days of fever and irritability mother tells you that she thinks she has another ear infection because she has been pulling on her left ear for the past two days you have been seeing this patient for well child exams since she was born so you know that she is up to date on all her immunizations and she's rarely, rarely sick she was treated for two episodes of otitis media one at a year and a half years of age and another at two and a half years of age temperatures uh, 98 uh, sorry 101 physical exam shows a erythematous and bulging left tympanic membrane loss of light reflex and decreased motility of the tympanic membrane right ear is unremarkable most appropriate next step is well this seems like a, a pretty uncomplicated case of acute otitis media and the, the mainstay of treatment is just a one-week course of antibiotics so seven days of amoxicillin should be good enough for this child next question five-year-old boy is admitted to the hospital because of increasingly irritability and fever the mother reports that the child has been having upper respiratory uh, symptoms for the past week the last few days the child has been constantly rubbing his left ear and increasingly irritable patient has had multiple ear infections in the past that were treated with oral antibiotics following recurrent episodes of these ear infections the child was advised to take a prophylactic single dose of moxicillin at bedtime the child has been taking these antibiotics regularly for the past three months on exam the child is found to have a fever of 101 examination of the right ear does not reveal any abnormalities the exam of the left ear is uncomfortable but the external auditory meatus appears normal the tympanic membrane is examined and after removal of ceremony is noted to be hyperemic bulging with indistinct anatomical landmarks light reflex is diminished and there is limited mobility on pneumatic insufflations some amount of middle ear effusion is also noticed the most appropriate next step is okay so this child has had recurrent cases of acute otitis media so then what happened was he was placed on antibiotic prophylaxis which is what you do and that's mentioned right here prophylactic antibiotics at bedtime amoxicillin but he still come back with an obvious case of otitis media so at this point the guidelines state that you have to go in and put in those tympanostomy tubes and those help to prevent accumulation of fluid in the middle ear so that would be choice A and finally 31 year old man returns to the clinic for the third time in four months complaining of right ear pain previously the patient was diagnosed with otitis media successfully treated with antibiotics 
patient confirms that he has taken the entire prescribed course of antibiotics. Past medical history is significant for lower back pain for which he takes ibuprofen. Temperature is 98, blood pressure is 110, pulse is 64, respirations are 12. Physical exam shows a white amorphous debris in the right middle ear. There is conductive hearing loss. The remainder of the exam is normal. The next step in managing this patient is. Well, this is a scenario of recurrent otitis media in an adult. And that can be the reason a adult gets these cholesteatomas. And also, he does have white debris, which is definitely a sign of that. So, in these cases, you have to do a CT of the head because you're looking for other problems such as erosion or abscesses. And also, sometimes with uh, cases that are this severe, you also may see uh, other processes such as labyrinthitis. That's why you would do a CT of the head. And in addition to these problems, there's another condition that you need to investigate, and that is labyrinthitis. And that can be done with a CT of the head, or in particular, the temporal bones, choice B.